May the 2nd, 2022 meeting of the Montpelier Design and Review Committee. We'll let members and staff introduce themselves. Don't forget to pull the microphones closer to you. Benjamin Cheney, member. Eric Gilbertson, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Steve Everett, member. Pritchett, member. And we can introduce Martha when she arrives. Sounds good. So unless anybody has anything else at the present time, we will let Meredith <laughs> review the meeting procedures. All right, so um, what's gonna show up on your screen is more for anybody who's watching via ORCA, um, but I'm gonna go through just some of the procedures for remote meetings. Oop, and Martha's in, okay. Um, all right, so for anyone viewing this meeting via ORCA Media, you can participate in tonight's Design Review Committee meeting via the Zoom platform. Either um, you can do this either through using this link here, which will let you access the video options as well as hear the meeting and be able to ask questions, or you can call into the meeting using this phone number and meeting ID, which will let you hear and speak. You just won't be able to see the screen. If anyone has a problem accessing the meeting, please email me at this email address. I will be monitoring it throughout the meeting to help you get in if needed. Um, for anyone attending via Zoom, turning on your video is optional. For everyone attending, please keep your microphone on mute. When you're not speaking, this will reduce background noise. Um, the Zoom chat function should be used only for troubleshooting or logistics questions. If you have a question or um, something substantive to add about one of the applications, please raise your hand and wait until the chair is called on you to speak. And then I'll be monitoring raised hands and views as well. And for some reason we haven't been catching you, do feel free to unmute yourself and, and ask to speak. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain because we have listed the Zoom access option as a way to get into it. But so far, everybody who's attending is an applicant. I, I haven't had a whole lot of public um, questions and inquiries about the applications on tonight, so I think we should be good. Um, all righty. I'll hand the meeting back over to the chair and Martha is on. So we have a full committee tonight. Oh, good. Good evening. Hey, Martha. Do I hear a motion from one of the members to approve the agenda? So moved. All second. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Ben. Eric. Steve. Martha. Yes. So the agenda is approved. We can move on to the first application for 12 Main Street, owner city of Montpelier, and applicant Lillian Eklund Gustafson. Is she here? Yep. On? Lillian is on remotely. So Lillian, you can unmute yourself and introduce your project, talk about it a little bit. Yeah, hi, I'm from, I'm a senior at the Central Vermont Career Center in Barrie, and I go to high school at Montpelier. Um, Pretty much I am designing a five foot by five foot garden plot to put by the parklet for all food insecure people to plant and grow their own food. Um, Martha, Liz, and actually Lillian too, if you want me to share the application on the screen so everybody can look at it, let me know. Um, with regard to placement, things like that, it's fairly straightforward, I think, but if anybody needs the reference, I'm happy to share. Yeah, Meredith, would you share the um, the plat that shows us where on the, on the lot it would be located? Yep. So there's the garden bed. Um, here's the location. I don't know if they've moved it today already, but the, the shelter space is here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, here's the line of where the sidewalk is. Here's Main Street but that's where the garden plot would be. Um, so it's a raised, you know, raised bed. So they're not digging down into the soil. They really can't on that site. That was my next question. So, so all of this is going to be above the soil line then. Is that yeah. Yeah. And we're also going to be putting a floor on, 
or essentially a floor on the raised on the bottom of the raised bed. So there's no way that any kind of contaminants from the grass can be put into the soil. Okay. Is that what the granite blocks and plastic sheeting? Yeah, so um, just as like a super safe, we are planning on putting granite blocks kind of lining the bottom and then essentially trash bags on the bottom and on top. So even if there were cracks in the boards, these contaminants, like there's no worry about any food being harmed. So <clears throat> where is the um, shelter going to be moved? Oh, well, that's that's not part of this, Liz. Right. Um, I, I realize I realize that. I was just curious, you know. So I was curious what the relationship would be between the shelter and the um, raised bed. Uh, the shelter's not going to be on the site at all anymore. I don't think. I think that's what City Council decided. That's okay. Right. The storage, I think. Yeah, I think it's going into storage at the DPW garage or somewhere else. Okay, I, I believe I did read something about that. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Does, does the movement of the shelter change the location of the raised bed? It does not. Um, it is a little bit of a letdown because that is essentially where a lot of people who really need this food have been staying, and that's pretty much like their safe space. Um, but also the reason why I'm putting it here is for accessibility. So um, people nearby who are trying to find shelter or even food can simply come here and plant and grow their food. Who is responsible for maintaining it? That would be, um, so Cindy Gothier has volunteered to help us. Um, and then there's a, teacher for next year of my class. Her name is Ari. I'm blanking on her last name. And then also the Central Vermont Career Center will be maintaining it. Will the Career Center be planting it? Yeah, so we have a few of our own plants that we're growing now that we plan to move into it. And if people have access to their own seeds, we're planning to leave space for them to plant their own food of their choice. What, what worries me about any planters in downtown is who's going to keep them up because they all require maintenance and they get sometimes get pretty bad looking if people aren't taking care of them. Well, right. And um, the teacher for next year, she's a, uh she's trained in like food like that's all of her most of her education is food and her class is going to be all around food and growing it and that kind of stuff um and then there's also for this seat growing season it's planning to stay there and then into the next growing season um if there is if people decide that it's too much of a hassle or it doesn't look good, then you can, the Montpelier High School, a teacher there volunteered to take it. Um, and if they don't have any need for it or want for it, then I am willing to take it because I have room at my house. Could you describe the exterior of the, all four sides, I see that there's this sketch showing granite blocks and plastic sheeting, but and I see the example of the design, but this one shows one foot of granite blocks and then the total height is two feet. Is the is the five foot by five foot raised bed basically a wood? Yeah, so the entire exterior is going to be of wood. It's only the inside that is going to have um, any plastic or granite. 
Um, so you won't see that. It'll also be covered in soil and fertilizer. Are the granite blocks just to hold it in place? Yeah, essentially. When I was first talking about designing this, um, there was concern that since it's by the river, it's technically a flood zone. Yes. And if there were a big flood to happen, then we don't want, you know, a big wooden box to go floating around town. Okay. So the granite blocks are there to keep it in place in case that does happen. Okay. Th thank you. Yeah. Any committee members have any further questions, comments, or suggestions? Um, the black plastic concerns me. I feel like that's uh, likely to become lots of pieces of small black plastic that are going to be hard to pick up in the next three years. That will maybe there's a road fabric that is more likely to um, stick together, and when and if this thing is removed, uh, it will the road fabric will still be intact and be able to be. Uh, disposed of, whereas I see black garbage bags uh, falling apart and being lots of little black plastic pieces. Um, so. Either that or a heavier plastic, either a, either a 60 mil plastic or a, a membrane, a rubber membrane, either, either one would be suggested in terms of its longevity you want the bottom to be waterproof right essentially yeah oh. so you can't get stuff migrating up uh, i would certainly put a heavier plastic on the bottom and maybe a road uh, kind of a road fabric uh the soil separation fabric really uh, on the upper one so so water can drain through right and i was while i was designing it i did realize that the top plastic might not be the best or necessarily necessary um just because at that point yeah the water wouldn't be able to drain through um, do you also have any suggestions of what kind of plastic I should be using that wouldn't, you know, break apart? You could either use plastic, like a 60 mil plastic, or they make, if you go to a garden center like Agway or someplace like that, they have a landscape fabric that's tough and performs the same function or you could use a, a rubber membrane any of those would be suitable and would last that might sounds be, great might, might be worthwhile going to a garden center and using what's recommended for that same purpose again because it's tough enough and it won't come apart easily i i would think you could get a a roofer to donate a small piece of the rubber mem membrane roofing Mm. To put on the uh, to put on the bottom, and that would be, you know, totally impervious. That sounds great. Yeah, I could do both or either one of those. There's a lot of black plastic in the world that's been put down with good intentions that is now disintegrated into small pieces, parts that is not pickupable. And clear plastic is worse. <laughs> well, I was thinking maybe it would be a nice idea to um, paint or stain the outside of the planter so it looks a little more finished, um, perhaps in like a deep red, you know, color or whatever to kind of blend in with the buildings around it. Yeah, I could definitely, I think a stain would be a really good, like maybe a dark walnut stain. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that would be amazing. It would be nice. <laughs> There's a really nice color dark stain, and I mean, you can use any, any uh, brand, but... Uh, 
There was a dark stain color called Jacobian that looks really nice. It's a dark, it's a cross between a dark brown and a charcoal, and it has a very natural look. And what kind of wood are you going to use? Um, it really depends on what is available. Um, I was hoping I could use cedar, but I mean, that's very hard to come across. And so it's either going to be in between a fir, I think is what it's called, or a hemlock. And it's most likely going to be a fir. There's a place up in Walcott that saws cedar. I can't remember the name of it now. P and R. Hmm? P and R. P, P and R or P N R? P and R. P and R. I'll look into it. Fontaine and East Mypelior also saws most everything. And the question still is, what are the prices right now? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Just describe the, uh, the source of your project when you go looking, and maybe somebody will have a kind heart. <laughs> no, I, I, I think if materials could be donated, I would think people would donate materials for it. Uh, and then you could put a little sign on it that who donated for it. I actually have figured out all the funding for it. So the Central Vermont Career Center is paying for this since it is my senior project. Oh. Um, and I'm also in the works of a sign as we speak. Um, and it's going to be dedicated to um, Jeremy Silva and flood who are two people who died in the last year and who are a part of the community in downtown okay without further ado we can go through the criteria there's several criteria that apply to the project uh, for all projects number three proposed landscaping shall be compatible with the neighborhood and the site on which the project is located, acceptable. And then there's a criteria, landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Projects within the design review overlay district and subject to the landscaping requirements in section 3203 shall consider the following. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards, the raised bed, would fall under that. Does landscaping obscure or undermine key architectural patterns or elements on historic buildings? Mechanical equipment screening, those don't apply, but the overall is acceptable. And all in favor of the project, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Martha. Yes. And Steve. So the Project is approved. Five to nothing in favor. You had a few just options on there or recommendations? The two recommendations that we discussed was that the plastic material be either a six heavy 16 mil plastic or rubber membrane roofing or a landscape fabric from a garden center specific for such use. And that was number one. The second recommendation was that a dark stain was recommended for the exterior of the planter bed. So it blends in better with the surrounding buildings and area. So Lillian, I will be um, emailing you a scan of that recommendation form and we'll just need your signature on it to then send back and then we'll be able to finish up the administrative site plan report to be able to get the permit out the door. That sounds great. Hold on, awesome. Steve, was there a any notes about maintenance or sort of uh there's a there's an agreement i believe between the city we didn't put it in here because it's not about the outside yep. of it but between the city and lillian's program about maintenance and what's to happen to the planter should it no longer be in use or start to wear down great okay 
Awesome. Thank okay, you, Lillian. Thank you very much. And thank you, guys. You. Good luck with your project. Yeah, good luck with thank it. you very much. Have a good one. Uh, before we go to the next one, there's somebody who signed in who's just listed as V um, on the Zoom. If you could unmute yourself and let me know who you are and what application you're attending for. Hmm. Well, when you get a chance, if you're doing something else, unmute yourself and we'll figure out who you are in between. Thank you. Okay, the next application is for 146 Main Street. Owner applicant, BIPM, Matt Benoit. And would you like to describe your project for us? Uh, so, Jesse, if you want to introduce yourself. Hello, uh, Jesse Remick from Black River Design Architects. Uh, I was expecting Matt to be here tonight. Uh, maybe but Matt's V? Could be. <laughs> Do you feel comfortable introducing the project or should we move on till Matt's? Oh, nope, I see Vince and Vanya. Okay. Uh, sure. So Matt doesn't appear to be on. Do you okay. want us to move on while we're waiting for him or do you think you're comfortable talking about it? Uh, I'm comfortable talking about it to a point. So <laughs> um, I can share my screen if that will help show the project. Yes, please. Okay, let me know if you can see my screen. Yep, it's coming up. Okay. I'm just going to email Matt while we're waiting. Oh, thank you. I'll go through the, the first couple of pages here, which are kind of template uh, detail items. Uh, this is kind of an overall um, aerial view of, of what the pro what, what's happening in the project. So this is 146 Main Street. Uh, the parking areas along Main Street are located right here. Uh, the existing sidewalk is is this line here. Uh, so what we're proposing is a new entrance uh, to a unit that he's creating, which is an adaptable unit. Uh, we, we came to this entrance point uh, from a long uh, path of actually going through a variance uh, to not be required to provide an, an accessible route to the apartment. Um, so we looked at options where we had a very long ramp coming from the west uh, and, and back side of the building along here up to an entrance door on this side. Uh, but the cost of that in relation to the total cost of the project was a higher percentage than uh, what should be. So they, they granted a variance and in talking with the variance board about alternate locations and what would make the most sense. Um, we ended up looking at this spot, uh, which from the parking area here does a fairly good job of providing as an accessible route as possible, at least to the stairs um, and then the entrance point on this east side facing Main Street. It's just an interior demolition plan. Um, so the unit itself is this kind of greenish gray shaded area uh, where the, the stairs going up uh, to a landing uh, and a storm door and entry door into the unit with a kitchenette, uh, dining kitchenette here, um, bedroom back in this area, coming into the living uh, area, then an accessible bathroom uh, with a roll-in shower. So this, this probably does the best job of explaining what, what this is going to look like. Uh, currently, this addition is white, uh, all white. Uh, so the owner is proposing on painting it red to match the rear portion of the, the stick framed uh, historic addition in the back. Uh, he's replacing these three windows, uh, which will be visible from the street. Uh, what he's proposing to use is a double hung window with div simulated divided lights that look similar to the windows that are there. Uh, it's a fiberglass clad window from Marvin uh, with wood interior. So for durability uh, reasons, he likes the fiberglass cladding. And the front entrance door, um, he's looking at a, I believe it's a Thermatrue door here that you can see on the left hand side with a full glass storm door in front. There's going to be a four foot wide concrete walk to the stairs, 
which he's proposing to use a PVC riser material with a Trex uh, pebble gray treads and landings. The railing that I'm, we're showing in this rendering uh, is a little bit out of date. Uh, what he's proposing to use uh, is something similar and is located on the south side of the building, going up to another entrance, uh, which would be more of a custom metal railing. It'd be a little bit lighter. Uh, what we're showing up here is really the requirements that he's he needs to meet uh, for building code and safety of the stair. So this why this doesn't directly represent what it's going to look like. Uh, these are the dimension requirements that he's going to be required to make in any stair, the, any stair guard and railing that he provides. This is the light fixture that he's proposing to use right here next to the door. It shows the lumens. It's not a directional downlight, but there's no uplight feature to it. And he's going to have it on a day night time. He's spoken to a local landscape, a landscaper. And so what he's proposing, and, and this is one of those sheets that was changed as well, in addition to that, that previous one, um, there was a little planning bed here. Uh, so he's proposing to put uh, three hydrangeas uh, in place of the existing uh, not accessible ramp uh, up to a landing, which doesn't provide an accessible entrance into the building perennial bed in this corner here next to the landing and two hydrangeas on either side of the walk from the sidewalk up to the stairs and then two larger lilacs um, on the north side buffering to the property to the north on the south side finally uh, he's putting river rock drip edge here uh, with some ornamental grasses it's approximately 24 inches deep uh, which is about 100 square feet of area here. He's also uh, proposing to put snow guards on the existing roof here to prevent uh, large amounts of snow gathering in this area. Those, those are the, the, the sheets that we have and we've provided in the application. Sorry to be so long-winded there. Oh, no, that was that was good. Thank you, Jesse. Sure. Uh, question, this is an apartment, correct? It is, yep, this is a new, so he's doing this in two phases. One phase we've, has already been approved, which is an internal uh, reworking and change of use from a business to an apartment. And so this is the final apartment. So he's actually adding, I think he's netting two additional housing units in this building. Yeah. I, I noticed you're making the apartment accessible, correct? The the apartment itself, the bathroom, will be fully accessible. Um, the apartment is required to be adaptable. Um, but yes, like I said, we did receive a variance to not have to provide an accessible route via a ramp uh, to the unit due to the, the cost. With the building, the floor level being as high as it is um, above grade, it, it, I think we were looking at a 68 foot ramp. Can you just explain very quickly as to why you're not putting a ramp in so it's fully accessible? Um, yeah, so so within the ADA, uh, you know, there's there's a, a list of things that they would prioritize uh, that you would provide um, when doing any project. And when you reach uh, a level that's 20% of the total cost of the project, then they want you to look at that list and through a variance process, have a discussion on what components uh, you would provide. The first one is always an accessible route. Um, in this case, uh, we were looking at, if I remember correctly, the cost of these um, upgrades uh, to provide accessibility was in the 50 percent range of the overall cost of the project because of the access to this back addition. There wasn't room in the front of the building to put a ramp of that length. And so we looked at an option. I have a drawing I can bring up if it's easier. I can actually draw here uh, where we were providing a landing here and the ramp was going all the way around the backside of this building, uh, staying away from the property line 
enough. Um, and so people were parking in this southern parking lot. Um, he was changing grade in this area here um, to make it accessible to a ramp that then turned and, and, and raised all the way up to this landing. And being that it was on the north side and the, and the way the roof structure works, all of the snow and rain was is draining down this way. So we were providing a roof over that structure as well. Um, and when you add all of the costs of the site work, the ramp, it was well above the 20% of cost, which they would look for you to provide in a project for accessibility features. Thank you. Yep. The other question I have, and I'm not sure we have any jurisdiction at all, is you're cutting a hole in the brick wall of the original house, correct? Oh, we are widening it to provide an accessible bathroom. Widening yes. it, okay. Yep. Uh, so there's already uh, a walkway or a, an opening through here. Um, this hatched area uh, is, is existing stairs down to the basement. So he's infilling that to provide an accessible bathroom. But it, this masonry opening had the be, other one. Sorry. And uh, I, I'm concerned about cutting, you know, widening that are you putting in a steel lintel or? Yeah, so he's working with the wall above. Yeah, there's a detail. I'm, I'm not sure if we'll end up just putting two steel angles in um, or we'll actually do uh, a C channel, but he's working with the Wolf Engineering uh, to provide those exact details. Yeah, it's the interior. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't really fall within design review, unfortunately, even though well, you know it's tough because it, it's a historic it, building. <laughs> yeah, my, my look at it is that's part of the original building and uh, just concerned about damage. Do you know when that addition was put on? Uh, this rear portion here, I do not. And I don't know when the side was put on either. I, I couldn't find no. a clear record of it in the um, permit history. Yeah, yeah I'm just concerned there. about structural damage to the original yeah. building. Yep. Yeah. So I, 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 I'd forgotten. I, I believe I included the structural notes. I may not have as, as it's an interior uh, portion of this building. But uh, what DeWolf Engineering is requesting is a three and a half by three and a half by quarter inch steel lintel for each wife of brick. Uh, to span the, to span the gap of the enlarged masonry opening. Thank you. Yep. Um, I have some of the same concerns that Eric just expressed. Um, I drove by there today, and this side unit sticks out very significantly. Um, and I had some question about when it was added to this building because it does not seem to to blend in at all. Um, and I understand from your answers that we really don't know when it was added. Is that correct? This this portion here? Yeah. I don't. I know historically it was it was a porch. Um, okay. I actually have a, I think there's a historic photo of that. Um, yeah. And so. And yeah. your proposal is to paint it red or more brick colored because right now it's, it's white. It's white right now. Um, yeah. The rear portion of this building, uh, which has the stick framed addition further to the west, which you can just see here. Um, that's that's original part of the building there that's that's a little door mm -hmm. going into another unit uh, so uh, matt was proposing uh, painting at the same color as that portion of the building that would blend a little bit more um the other question or comment that i have is there's a great deal of work being done here in order to make this an accessible apartment but i don't understand how someone in a wheelchair can get in there um that's true um that was part of the variance um yeah. but Aside from being in a wheelchair, there's other reasons to make things accessible, as you know, you know, as as we all know. So um, once you're once you get to the unit, that you have access to the door. Um, there's accessibility to that door as far as clearances inside the unit. You'll you'll be able to to move around um, per the ADA. But I hear you. It's, it was a little strange. It was a very long conversation with the variance board because it. it and me as a as a, a designer, um, it didn't feel right, right? Uh, but the costs were were really high in this for this project based on how little he's actually doing to the unit. Um, so, in that sense, it, it made sense.
I was, did you look at um, raising the grade of the area in front of the stairs of this, of this addition, um, just so you would have fewer stairs and it would make someone help someone with mobility issues not have quite so many stairs to climb? Um, I mean, once we didn't look at that, uh, just because of how tight we are to the property line here, and it would probably need a retaining wall, uh, or the grade would drop off pretty quickly and significantly. Um, but also, by trying to slope the grade up, it's, it's such a short distance, um, it wouldn't really be an accessible route. So, so this right. is, is to be as gradual as we can, um, and then providing the stairs up mm -hmm. to the landing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, part of this project, I should say, and, and I mentioned it briefly, is uh, there's an existing uh, non-conforming ramp going up to a landing uh, right now, um, and he is proposing to remove that. It's, it's not part of the historic structure. Um, I can bring up a picture of it if you'd like, but what you can what you can kind of see here is that there's a, looks like it's, I think it's a concrete block that is set on top of these, or it's a granite block set on top of this larger block here. So even though the ramp goes up to this landing, it's still not an accessible route into the building. Right, yeah, okay. Any members have any additional comments, questions, or suggestions? And again, considering the limitations of the site. Um, just to double check, uh, Vince and Vanya, what application are you attending for tonight? Just so that we make sure we get to you when we get there. You'll need to unmute yourself. Um, it's if you hover over the bottom of your screen, bottom left of your your um, Zoom window, there should be a like a little microphone with a red line through it. And if you click on that, you'll unmute. Oh, when you can find it, please do so and let us know what you're on for tonight, so we can get any comments you have. Jesse, are you able to show us the railing design that he's leaning more towards? I realize the the, pit, the big picture that you have there is just for code satisfaction. Yeah, something similar to this. Uh, and of course, this would be this would need to be a guardrail height. So that would be at forty two, and then there would be a and then there'd be an intermediate handrail um, at thirty four inches high, um, fastened to the, the larger posts. And it would project twelve inches past the. Last. Correct. Yeah. And likely to be a, what we always see a pipe handrail. Um, I, I think he wants to, to talk with someone and find out options on what's available. Um, we did a little bit of digging and you know, there, everything comes in kits and it just doesn't seem like the right application here. Um, so, I think probably for the handrail pipe is the way to go because of the grasping restrictions for ADA. Uh, but I think a little bit more ornamental on the guardrail, uh, which you'll see more of, I think, uh, is what he's looking for. In full disclosure, he did call me, but I haven't uh, had a chance to talk to him or look at it at all, but it is oh, okay. seemingly an important um, detail to the front of this building. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I may need to recuse myself based on that, but it matters to me that this is a thought through detail. Agreed. Right. I agree that a pipe rail is a little too um, industrial looking for an elegant building like this. Something lighter and as you show in the, in the photo would be, in my opinion anyway, um, more appropriate. 
Because currently it shows painted wood guardrails with painted metal handrails. Yeah, so I that was one of those sheets that we revised. Um, and so uh, painted metal guardrails uh, and painted metal handrails to match existing. Okay. Is what we're, lo we're looking for. So the match existing is really referring to the guardrails, um, but we're required uh, to put handrails with the right grasping uh, shape in diameter uh, per the building code. Uh, so that that would probably be the inch and a half diameter pipe. Um, there's a little bit of options. You have some elongated sort of um, oval type shapes you, we can look at, um, but for the handrail, making sure that it is meeting code in the guardrail, um, the height requirement and the dimension between uh, the balusters, uh, the four inch max is what we'd be looking for. Okay. Um, I see the sheet now painted metal guardrails and painted metal handrails. Yeah. He had briefly mentioned, he mentioned a number of wanting to do four or so different rails to me. I don't know if he's intending to also do the one to the left there into the main entrance. He hasn't mentioned that to me. Yeah, I, again, I have not spoke, I briefly had a conversation with him, so I haven't okay. looked yeah. hard, so I don't really know much, but. The, if the committee wanted to, they could, as a option in here, add in replacing that front main entry that's just a basically a pipe railing right now with something to match um, what's on the building and or what's what's being proposed to go on the ADA or the accessible apartment. Um, and I think that would be an easy thing to throw in on this permit if you wanted to, so that he can do them all, all at the same time and get a, a consistent approach across the building. If you all want. And again, it's not part of the application, but it would. It, it ties could, it in. Could, it could uh, tie in and allow the option to do that within the next, what is it, a two year? Yeah, two years. Two year time I think, frame. I think that's a nice suggestion. Yeah, and this door and now is only serving one unit, which is a two story unit per fire code restrictions. When you mentioned the door, the door that is shown in this photograph looks a little bit. Um, industrial or a garage doorish to me, and and seems incongruous with the building. Um, have there been other ideas about a door when we're seeing this from the main street? Yeah, so I think we were kind of aiming towards the divided light, similar to the windows. Um, we did go back and forth on whether the door would be white, whether it would be a darker color. Uh, you can see that there's an existing door here without any glazing uh, mm -hmm. that is kind of like a deep reddish, almost wine color. Um, mm -hmm. But we landed on white to keep it keep it simple. I, I, I think I would I prefer to see it a darker color. Uh, I would too. Personally. Um, it, it really stands out that way and yeah. not in an attractive way. The, the glazing is, is, is kind of an important feature. Uh, so that really that's that's the main entrance and, and there was a window here um, and that's being removed it was, it was kind of in this area here uh, because of the, the clearance we need for the door uh, and with the railing it would it would be in conflict and also this window looks into a, a separate unit so he, he had a window here at one point and decided that that visual of standing in one window seeing right into another unit he wanted to avoid um, so we're, we're basically taking a window out, putting a window, a door in with glazing um, so that there's really two windows um, into that entry area, kitchen and dining. Well, I'd really like to see at least the storm door be more congruous with the building. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the storm door is gonna be pretty, the, the idea there was that it's pretty narrow. Uh, with glazing. So really, you're going to see more of this door. 
Um, but there are color options for that door. Yeah. That you, could, you could look at. The only issue with adding a storm door in that location is that uh, how do you get outside to shovel the the walk without a cover? Right. Over the over the top. And I, I can't speak for Matt, but I, I, I see him around town all the time shoveling landings and walks. So I don't know if that's part of what he would be doing here, but I assume that it would be. Problem is, if you get a heavy wet snow overnight until somebody gets there, you have an egress issue. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, part of, and I don't mean to, to go away from that because it is legitimate point but from an egress standpoint we are adding a window on the back of the building where there was an existing door and that window size to be an egress means of egress from the bedroom it's going to be similar to these windows it's just going to be taller is there a landing or a stair on the back or is that just jump to the ground um, that's go through the window and, and, and get out to safety in, in case of an emergency. Um, that, that's part of this entrance on this side that, that I tend to like better than the previous option where we were trying to come around this back is that it was it just didn't feel as secure, right? You know, this, this kind of has a more open feel if, if you were someone going to this unit late at night. Um, rather than going around the back of the building. Um, so yeah, at this point, there's no entrance back there, just a window. Any other comments or questions at this point? We can go through the criteria for all projects, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Uh, for historic structures, removal of historic materials or alterations that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. The only thing being removed here is the ramp, the existing ramp, which again does not meet codes. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Uh, there are no deteriorated character defining features. Any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited chemical or physical treatments, shall not be approved. That this is acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing size, scale, architectural features, detailing and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties, acceptable. Proposed landscaping shall be compatible with the neighborhood and the site on which the project's located, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash storage, fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened, acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable. Proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height and windows and doors. Acceptable. Rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings in the facade of a building creates a rhythm. Acceptable. Outdoor lighting fixtures, structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and compatible with the neighborhood, acceptable. Landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Projects within the design review overlay district and subject to the landscaping requirements in section 3203 shall consider the following. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, other types of furniture visible from the street or side yards, 
Does landscaping obscure or undermine key architectural patterns or elements on the historic building? Uh, mechanical equipment screening obviously doesn't apply here. For historic structures, existing historic and contributing resources such as street trees, fences, gates, walls, steps, gazebos, walkways, front and side yard patterns shall be retained or restored when impacted by alteration of a building. Walls and fences shall be compatible with the site and building and scale traditional materials designed that reflects the period of the building and or is compatible with the surrounding context, acceptable. And then the recommendation, which was an option for the applicant, the applicant has the option to add railings for the main entry to the building, which match the proposed railings for the addition in the current application, uh, which could provide consistent design detail. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric. Steve, this is Martha. I'm a no. Okay. Yes. And Steve. So Ben is abstaining. Okay. This vote is three to one. Um, so Jesse, I will be sending you and Matt a copy of a scan copy of this recommendation form, so you guys can look it over. Um, and if you're okay with the result and the option that's in there, I'll need uh, Matt to sign it and send it back so that we can move forward on the rest of the administrative site plan. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Jesse. Um, and Merritt, if you if you want to know why I voted no, I, I just don't think that the changes are consistent and. Um, with the existing historic building. Okay. Thank you for that, Martha. Okay. Thank you. Good luck, Jesse. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. Good night. The next application is for 39 Court Street, owner Theo Kennedy, applicant Don Forges. I think we have both Theo and Don on, and it looks like. Oh, wait, did we just, it looks like we have Vince and Vanya got unmuted. So Vince, Vanya, could you let us know what application you're on for? Can you guys hear us now? Yes. Great, sorry about that. We had a, we're having a microphone issue on the computer. We had to dial in. Oh, that's that's not a problem. What, what application are you on for? We are on for 35 and 41 Elm Street. Okay, great. Um, when we get there, we will be happy to hear from you. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, yes, we have Theo and Don on. Go ahead and describe your project for us. Good evening. Okay. I'm going to defer to Don, who has kindly been the applicant on my behalf. Okay, good. Yes, so I'll... I'll start from the beginning. I'm the contractor that was hired to do these railings. So at one point, Chris Lumber had come by. There's a, a sale of the building to a new owner, and, and he made several recommendations of what needed to be done uh, to bring some certain things up to code. What I was hired for is on the exterior, the railing, the 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 original railing is, is far too low to meet any standard. It's supposed to be uh, 42 inches, of which Chris had mentioned that. Uh, so what, what we've done in the past, and I've actually done, I think it was 17 Court Street, somewhere down the street, I did the same thing, and we've done this multiple times, is just inset from the original railing. You don't touch the original railing because you want to keep the historic value of it. You do a black aluminum railing, which tends to blend in uh, at the proper height, and that was Chris Lumber's recommendation. Uh, so we're going to do that and the main railing. And then I, I did include a picture in the application. If you look to the left side, The case railing was obviously added later, and the plan there is to just bring that up to code. It is not to height, and the spacing on the on the uh, balusters are too wide. So that's a that's basically what I'm looking to apply for is just simply doing the aluminum inset railing to match exactly the same shape and size. There's gonna be seven posts, three eight foot sections in the front, one six foot section on the right. 
one almost three foot section on the left and then an inset if you look at the picture inset uh coming back towards the right right side of about two and a half, three feet uh, of the black aluminum railing, and then just a rebuild of the railing on the staircase. Mary, just do you have a picture of that? I can pull up the application. Uh, give me a minute, because I want to scroll to the right page on my packet before I share so I don't make everybody dizzy. Because <laughs> it's a long way to scroll tonight. So this is the stretch. Sorry, let me know when you can see it. I can see that, yeah. This is the stretch of railing, this one that goes down here, here, mm -hmm. and then it also wraps around here, because this is like a two-stage stairwell, right, Don? It is. There, yep. There's a landing you could see in the middle. Yep, and then more stairs up here. So that's where the black railing is going to go, and then this yep. railing is the one that's going to be re built correct it'll, it'll be similar to be a little nicer it's just as you can see the balusters are too far apart i think they're seven inch space they have to be four inch on center yep um and then the height of that railing at the landing is shy of about four or five inches whatever it is okay. so that this was that was obviously added later so i'm just going to make a nicer railing and replace it uh to, to get it up to code Yep. And then, like I said, the, the the recommendation of Chris Lumber, and we've done this before in Montpelier, and, and obviously I've, I, or I've done it in other towns like Burlington, is you just do a railing just four to six four to six inches on the inside of the existing railing in the black aluminum. It doesn't stick out; it tends to blend in, and a lot of people don't even notice it. But then, at least, it brings it up to code. How is that railing attached either to the post and or existing railing? So I'm going to, I'm not even going to attach it to the building. I'm going to do seven posts all attached to the decking using timber locks, which are equal to a three eighths lag uh, in terms of code. So that therefore, if somebody in the future wants to remove it uh, for whatever reason, it can be done without any changes, damage to the existing railing or the house. So that aluminum railing, we don't have a picture of it. We just have this black and white photo of existing. And so that aluminum railing will have its own individual posts, but to support it, but no uh, balusters. Oh, no, they're the balusters. There'll be certainly railings. There, there'll be the balusters at four inches on center. I do have a picture I can pull up of one that I've done. This is the actual one. Oh, no, that's fine. So I don't know if you, can will be see, redundant. if you can see this on your video. Can you, can you email it to me? Because I can then share can. it. Um, you have my email? Because I can pull it up on my email and then share it on the big screen. Um, do, 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 do. If you could just shoot me your email real quick, just tell me, yep. I'll write it in. Go ahead. Uh, oh, I was just going to, I thought I, you got emailed. Um, so it's M Crandall, C R. A N D A L L at Montpelier hyphen VT dot org. Okay, hopefully that all worked. <laughs> actual size well hopefully that just went off to you uh let's see give it a minute um i thought i emailed you directly when i sent out the you did i could probably you're right i could probably pull up something well no I was just i'm using both my sorry that's okay was yours the yahoo account correct the toy started that toy jigs name correct okay yep. all right because i'm not getting it so give me one second
just in case there was a typo there. I just emailed you as well. Um, okay. Let me go back. Okay, just... There we go. All oh, right. There we go. We just... Hold on. Got it. You did get something? All right. And then I'll also send off all photos. Uh, copy. Sorry, guys, I'm going to get it into a document so it opens better. Well, I'm just going to send you a sample of my traditional railing that I do. Let's see. Hopefully that will work for the actual staircase railing. Where is that? So. Uh, give me one second. Sorry. Share okay. screen. Uh -huh. That's cool. That's cool. Here we go. Uh, that's a little, so that's, so that's a sample of that, that's, that's the actual railing that I'd be doing with the posts. That's that, that is the wolf railing. Uh, okay, so that would be inside, done. right? Sorry. Yes. It would be just four to six inches to the inside, basically mimicking the railing, the existing railing, but without touching it. And so the existing railing would stay, so the balusters would then be redundant? That's the whole idea, is that because it's historic uh, in the historic district, you don't want to touch the existing railing, but the existing railing doesn't meet code. It's actually really shy uh, for height uh, requirements. So what we've done, and we've done this in the past, I think 17 Court Street, something of that nature, um, we did the same thing. You do an inset rail. And actually, uh, while I was there more, most recently, there was another gentleman. He said he'd never even noticed it. So that's the whole idea is it blends in. And the balusters on the existing railing, what's the spacing on them? Those, I believe, are four inches on center to meet code and the height of that rail is 30 some odd inches no it has to be 40 inches to 42 and, and to be the 42. height on the existing railing oh, the height in the existing railing is yeah roughly i'd say 30. i've seen this done and i think it can be effective yeah I mean, the whole idea is to not mess up the historic uh, nature of the building, but to bring it up to code. That's that's the whole. And that's and by the way, just the, this Chris Lumber when he came and met, I believe he met with uh, Sarah uh, Sarah Shea, who's one of the property managers. And I'm not sure if he spoke with Theo as well, but that was his recommendation as well. Yeah, he did he did meet with me on site when he uh, recommended or required this. Anybody have any questions? Any of the members? I, I, I'm not clear on why if the current balusters are four inches on center uh, and meet code in that regard, uh, why you're putting uh, the verticals in the new railing. Sorry? Just a single pipe at the appropriate height would s seem to meet code to me. If that's if that if those railings are are meet the four inch requirement, if the posts in the existing so, meet the four inch requirement, those those balusters are actually not spaced. I might have I might have miscommunicated. They're not properly spaced, uh, and then I was led to believe that we should not touch the existing railing whatsoever because that was the discussion originally: is to add above the existing railing uh, to meet code height. But I, it was it was told to me, and I believe Chris Lumber had explained it as 
you don't want to touch the original railing. You want to leave that intact. I, 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 I yes, I think that's correct. But I, I would, you don't know exactly the spacing on the existing. Uh, I believe the, the the front ones are six and the staircase are seven. So they don't meet code outside no, of the really. light. Okay. No. So it'd be difficult to either run wire or something to to meet the spacing because then you would have to have that spacing all the way up to 42 inches. So you would, if you were to do a pipe rail, you'd have to do three of them above the existing rail. And then now it's starting to get a little <laughs> encumbered. Well, and just as practice, we've done this in Montpelier before. This has been the practice, the, the black aluminum inset rail. Uh, and as well, I've done it at other locations in Vermont. Uh, it, it seemed to have been the best solution we've come up with so far without touching and, and destroying or damaging the historic railing. And we're sort of stuck again. You have a, a difficult situation and how best to solve the code issues without impacting the building and if, and if, and damaging or detracting from what the original detail is. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a, in the back of the, the packet on this that was circulated, there is a, a view of the house from a little further away um, that I can pull up. I don't know if it's gonna help at all just to sort of get a sense of, oh, huh, it's in my printout, but it's not in the scanned version, I don't think. Well, that's annoying. Um, I don't know how that happened. Um, but there was a Google image that Audra added to the printouts. Um, I have that. Yes. Okay, so it's in all, the print. Anybody who has a printed that. packet yeah. has that. I have it, um, Meredith. See, pardon? I have it. Okay, um, it's just a, a Google image that Audra pulled where you can see the house from a distance. Um, they might give a little better view of, of how it's gonna, you know, how it could blend in, especially with the, the way the, the port with the porch roof shades that area. I'm good with that and it's reversible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, unless anybody has anything else to add, I can go through the criteria. The exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved which is happening in the preservation of the existing railings. Deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced where the severity of deterioration requires a replacement of a character defining feature. The new feature shall be replaced in kind. Any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, uh, which is not happening here, that's acceptable. For historic structures, any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing, size, scale, architectural features, detailing and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties, acceptable. Additions to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire code shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible acceptable respect views of the state house dome acceptable architectural features including but not limited to cornices windows shutters fan lights and tabulature trim and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building Architectural features on an addition shall not duplicate, but shall respect the original historic building's architectural features acceptable. Okay. 
and porches and stairs on historic structures. Stairs, ramps, and porches shall employ suitable detailing to connect and be compatible with the historic and important design features of the existing buildings and new construction. Acceptable. Um, only recommendation would be paint, paint your railings, <laughs> existing railings before you put the new ones in, <laughs> just for access. And all in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Steve. Martha. Yes. Vote is five to zero in favor. Thank you all very much. So, uh, there weren't any changes to the uh, recommendations really on here that are um, binding. So we will move forward on this uh, permit pretty quickly. Do you want it, let's see, I'm, sorry, I'm going back to the application. Where did you say to have stuff sent to? Applicant. Uh, so do you want us to mail the permit to you, John? It'll need to be posted at the project site. It, it might be better. So we're on a bit of a timeline because of the sale of the building. Uh, Theo can, knows more about I, the date. I can swing by and get it if it's not a problem. Yep, yep. I, I'll put a note to email you once it's issued. Okay, sounds excellent. So, so Don, I'll we'll bring it at? up. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I said I'll pick it up when it's ready and bring it to the site. Yeah, exactly. So where, uh, Meredith, what are we looking at in terms of when I could start on this? Um. So... <laughs> I'm to talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I'll be in the office fairly early. Give me a ring. Okay. okay. I can do that. Sure. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Have a, have a good evening. Thank you. You too. Thank you and good luck with your project. Thank you very much. We can move to the next application for 3 Chapman Road. Owner applicant Ben Doyle for construction of a new woodshed. Describe your project. So Ben, if you want to come up to the seat here in front of the there, and then just make sure the microphone is fairly close to you so that we can get you recorded for the minutes. I'm going to recuse myself with this. I can leave the room, or I can just sit here. <laughs> you can probably sit there, Eric. I don't think you have to leave. Ben, ben is a neighbor and also my boss. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm sorry. I'm Ben Doyle. I should describe my project. Yes, please. Yes. Yeah, I, I would just start by apologizing for the, I am clearly not a talented artist, but uh, I tried to sketch out what I'm trying to do. Basically, just build a, I'm trying to build a woodshed. Uh, you know, for the last few years, I've stacked my wood and covered it with tin and it's really a mess. And so uh, just trying to uh, build a, a 10 by 20 foot uh, shed, kind of salt box style roof, uh, just really a wood shed with an open bay that I envision being um, uh, 10 to 12 feet wide. And then a, a kind of door on the side that will serve as additional point of access. Well, actually two doors. One, if I'm coming down the steps from the house, I can walk right into the side of the wood shed. So there'll be a door there and then uh, on the front facing the street, it would be a wide bay where, you know, stack the wood. And then on the to the right of that bay is another small door um, that would be serve as kind of like a garden shed or another point of access. And then on that on that far wall, there'd be um, a small window that would look out to the yard. And then on the back, there'd be three, um, three windows, really for more for ventilation than for anything else. The asphalt shingles, the whole thing would be built out of rough cut lumber and then shingled with um, cedar shingles, which is what I have in my house. That's a nice description, and I appreciate your apology on the on the drawings. And sort of as a general comment, I'm feeling a little sad about the information that we're getting to be able to try and make decisions about um these things like i you know really you know what i'm looking at with this drawing and even back to like stuff coming like i feel like those railings that on jesse's were important and those that was hard to see and then not having any information about what the actual railing behind the other railing is other than like a small so I'm feeling like it's hard to make a decision on these things. Uh, and that's, 
that's a broad comment, not oh. necessarily specific to your project, but um, the uh, you're intending to do a cedar shake on the outside of this that is yeah in that and I uh, yes and I would say actually in the in the I, I I'm not a, obviously a talented visual artist but I did write a, a kind of detailed description that describes all the materials style. But yeah, the whole thing would be covered in cedar shakes, uh, wood windows, the doors. I was going to build the doors myself using uh, tongue and group, you know, like tongue and group beadboard, just so that it'd be like a solid. Uh, I wasn't going to paint. I was just going to leave it natural colors throughout. Um, Are the windows double, two double hung side by side? No, I was, you know, to be honest, I haven't bought the windows yet. I was okay. just going to get a, like old, the bottom half of a sash from a salvage yard, you know, down at White River, Vermont Salvage. They have a bunch of different sizes. So I'm open to, you know, I could do single pane or split pane. Um, they have a wide selection. I just haven't bought them yet. No, at the picture show, it looks like two windows together. And yeah, no, I'm sorry. I was just thinking of a single sash with a with a, uh, a divider down yeah. the middle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's a double hung window, you would have a. It would be probably. It'd be a single. It'd be a single sh sash. So you're talking about like okay. one half of a do exactly. double hung. So yeah. how would they open? On hinges. Just okay. To pop out. Gotcha. Okay. Can you say an asphalt shingle? Yeah, I was, I was gonna, I mean, I'm open to whatever, but I was gonna just use the architectural asphalt shingles. Mm -hmm. Got asphalt shingles in my house. Yep, yep. Would you paint it the same color as the house? You know, I, I, I'm not planning on painting it right okay. now. I, I think I might be back someday about yep. the paint color in my house and just kind of wait, I think. And would you be doing like trim details that match? Yeah, I would. Yep. Um, it looks like you have some shingled corners and some corner boards. I guess I'm looking at this photograph here and not seeing the presence of a corner board and seeing where I think that's a, I mean, it's harder to achieve, but I think it's a nice look when the shingles come together on the corners, yeah. but whether uh and maybe you haven't just you haven't. Be, i mean i'm open to whatever but to be honest i really like visually i like having that like a narrow trim yeah. on either side and then um yeah clearly it just i don't know what i'm looking at yet corner no, board, yeah corner board is much easier in terms of construction than having it last because shingles tend to i mean no oh, yeah. matter how close you cut them and Put them together they always will separate on the corner just from the differences in the temperature and moisture levels I think your house is a really remarkable, cool house, and I know that you will do a nice job and do a nice thing. So I, I, I feel confident in that. But I appreciate the questions. I have to say, like, I love my house, you know. And I, uh, Eric knows this. I used to live across the street, and I love that house. And uh, I don't want to mess this house up. Yeah. And do you plan on doing the work yourself? I do. Yep. And even though I can't draw, I actually. Um, I've worked construction in the past and feel confident that I can <laughs> pull off a wood <laughs> That's it. I don't think we're going to see too many shingled woodsheds before right. the design review committee. So. Right. I agree with that.
And, and your application says that you're at least 40 feet away from any property line. Is that correct? Um, uh, yeah, the, it's, I want to say it's right in the middle of my property and it's a three quarter acre lot. I'm trying to remember the distance between the front of the woodshed and the street. Uh, but it's it. uh, so you said on here, it's about a hundred forty feet to one street, a hundred feet yes, to the other. That's right. I mean, it's, it, it more than complies with the setback requirements. Mm -hmm. The setbacks are much smaller than that. Okay. I think it actually like, well, in, in the summertime anyway, nobody's going to see it except for when you're driving by my driveway. Um, it's pretty well screened. I just made a general comment that the proposed woodshed would have details including siding, trim, roofing materials, and color to match or be compatible with the existing house as much as possible, which is, I think, the way you described it. Any other comments, questions, suggestions from anyone? We'll go through the criteria. Exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. New construction shall be considered to be compatible if the materials used possess a kind or type that are appropriate to the district. Materials selected shall either fit the neighborhood context of the proposed building and or reflect the nature and use of the structure acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use acceptable. I'm not sure why reviews of the State House dome were in here, but we'll call it acceptable since it's nowhere near it. <laughs> okay. Uh, height. New buildings shall be compatible with the varied heights of existing adjacent buildings acceptable. Proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm, the visual pattern established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors, and the facade of the building shall create a rhythm, acceptable. Roof shape and equipment, consider similarity or compatibility with roof, sh roof shapes in immediate area. Seal rooftop equipment, there will be none. Um, acceptable in this structure. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tabulature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building should be considered in the alteration of a building. That one actually should have been not. Not applicable, probably. Okay, I'll that's, call it. We're not altering. I'll just call it not applicable here. Yeah. Sorry, I missed one. That's like a criteria for new buildings only. New development shall incorporate sustainable design and construction methods and materials compatible with the historic materials and styles acceptable. Scale and massing of new buildings shall be compatible with surrounding structures acceptable. Context and connectivity. Building design shall be sensitive to the overall character and context of the design review overlay district and to adjacent buildings acceptable. Accessory buildings and structures. New accessory buildings or structures shall be located within either the side yard or rear yard and shall not visually disrupt the streetscape or affect the integrity of the existing building or proposed new building acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Then. This is Martha. I'm a yes. Liz, yes. And Steve, yes. Vote is four to nothing in favor. 
So Ben, there's a pen there. You're gonna wanna sign the bottom of this and then just pass it to me so we can get your permit Steve, issued. Right, right down there. Steve, I'm yeah. you put my name down as refusing. I will. Yep, and I have it here on the minutes okay. notes that I'll send yeah. to Tam. Not, not a big deal. Yep. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Yeah, I'll just make a note on there oh, at the yes, bottom right. of that. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know what? You can probably give that to me because right. nobody else is here Good for this. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Next application for 35 to 41 Elm Street. Owner Tim Ayer, applicant Aaron Ansel, Ansel Carpentry. Review edition of a covered porch seating for the adjacent restaurant. Is someone here to describe the project? Uh, yes, I, um, I'm uh, Aaron Ansel. I've um, been contracted to uh, build this um, structure by uh, Vincent Vanya, who are also uh, in attendance. Uh, they own uh, the Hello. Hippie Chickpea um, and just want to expand their seating options. Um, anyway. Uh, so yeah, Aaron, if you want to just describe the project um, and any you know, key design decisions that were made when developing it. Sure. Um, so uh, adjacent to 35 Elm is, uh, I think, like a five-car uh, parking area. Um, and they want to turn uh, one of those spaces uh, into this uh, uh, deck uh, and covered eating area um, with a server station and a small little bar area in the back. Uh, um, sit, sit, sit seating bar, not a not a server bar. Um, uh, some of the concerns are just making is it's in the floodplain, making sure that it would be uh, securely attached. Uh, so we're going to uh, put a few helical piers. Uh, uh, through the asphalt um, and uh, connect the deck structure to those. Um, the uh, uh, ground is fairly level, but does uh, go up and down a little bit. So we're we're going to raise, you know, need to raise the platform up. Um, I think three rises or three steps, uh, about about maybe about twenty inches or so. Um, and one of the things we wanted to try and do was to get a ramp in there for uh, better accessibility, um, but it was going to take about a, a third or more of the deck space, um, or really a, a significant amount of the seating area. Um, so uh, we'll have a, a um, sort of you know portable ramp that we can move into place as needed. Um, um, there's sort of rails uh, for safety, I guess, all around the structure. Um, um, let's see what else. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's uh, about it for the moment. <laughs> Any questions or or Vince and Vanya? Do you want to add anything? Hippie Chickpea is going to run this. Um, Hi there, Vince and Vanya. We're the, we're the operators and owners of Hippie Chickpea. Hi, Vince. Nice to have you on, and Vanya. Hi. Hi there. Nice to be here. We're excited about this project. Uh, I hope hope everyone on the call is as well. Um, for us, it's, uh, it's a project we thought we would eventually do when we took over the space, just because the dining room is pretty tiny. Um, obviously last two years dealing with COVID, we are takeout only. This is going to help us, um, with our business to have seating. If we were to open the dining room again, it would be, you know, just a handful of seats. So, um, this is almost necessary, um, moving forward. Um, the roof is so we could use it obviously more of the year. Um, yeah, and uh, we're happy to answer any questions while we're here. I have two questions. Number one, based on the, the sketch, is there a reason there's no fascia on the length of the building? 
Um, that's a that's a good question. Uh, there's actually one detail that I wanted to mention that that isn't drawn right. I think that we'll want a fascia um, for for looks and and uh, to help hold the structure together. <laughs> um, uh, and that material, the sort of exposed rafters uh, posts, um, will be at a local hemlock. Um, uh, and then uh, the server station uh, is in Cedar. Um, uh, but y yes, that will get a fascia. Yeah. And you're okay. And second question, why pick a red standing seam roof instead of like a black or dark bronze? And there's no color chip with the application that I could, could find. Um, I can I can uh, send uh, I'm not sure at the moment but I can send a color uh, uh, to, to, to you guys um, and I think but maybe Vincent Mon you can speak better to this but um, hippie chickpea has sort of and, and that building has utilized a lot of different bright and vibrant colors um, and I think the, the the roof was to just sort of continue that that sort of liveliness and trends um but uh, Vincent Vanya yes uh to add to that it the color of the roof um the the color of the building now is is gray with a red trim we installed an awning on the front of the building over the takeout area that's uh red um, brick color red maroon if you will so the roof would match the color of the awning so I'm going to pull up the front of the building right now that shows, doesn't have the awning on it, but it has, shows the red trim. Yeah, the that's, awning matches that red trim it's, that's currently there now. That's, a, that's an older photograph. Yep, that's an older photograph, but it's what I can pull up just on Google Maps. So, yeah. It's the fan, the fan is is uh, to the left of the front door where the parking meter is and the white flowers. Yep. And the two, those are now that's our to go window, uh, takeout area. Um, we are not currently doing uh, in room and dining in person. I guess you would call it. <clears throat> so the the awning we recently installed matches the red trim and we thought the roof would look nice to match the awning and the red trim got it so it's can can you get roofing that's subtle enough to match that some of the red roofing is a little bright because <laughs> <laughs> this is more of sort of almost a bricky red Right. Well, the the trick is, can you find standing same colored roofing that's yeah. that color? Uh, but unfortunately, we've seen some red roofing that's <laughs> a bit a bit on the bright side, which would detract from your entire structure. Um, so I am looking for the um, red options that they have. Uh, um, but it's uh, um, uh, it's a good. I'm 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 not sure. Uh, I, Vince Ravani, do you remember the color name that you had? Uh... There was only one red option on the website for the roofing company, mm -hmm. and it seemed to match almost exactly, and it and it was. Okay. Not shiny at all. Okay. It's kind of a yeah. matted, um, yeah, bricket. So I, I, could, I could pick up a, a sample of the color and and match it to the trim that's there. And if it seems too bright, maybe we should have a have a, a, a different option. Um, I don't know if that would. Yeah, I mean, we ben would we're open to suggestions if it's if uh, black matte color or bronze or whatever is that something that's more, uh, you know, matching to 
or or for whatever reason the the board thinks that would be a better option we're we're open to that um i think we could we could certainly submit a swatch or or kind of get you guys the info if needed um i don't have it in front of me i'm trying to pull it up so it's a color that matches yeah, the but, trim and the awning yeah it's not a, a different shade of red that would be too bright it's just a appropriate we match. could perhaps just uh condition it that the uh, roofing be as close as possible to the trim and awning yeah, with an option to go with something that's more like a, a, a muted black, or, black or matte black or gray, if for some reason the red that really yeah. is available doesn't match as well. I think that's what Steve is probably writing right now on the yes. recommendation form um, that'll get emailed to you guys. <laughs> Two other okay, questions. That's, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay, uh, Ben has a couple questions. You have a... Uh... Stainless steel pointing to two different locations, one of which seems to be a, a, a bar that looks out over the river, look, looks like a nice place to sit. And then the other, is that indicating stainless steel cable or some sort of wire? Like, um, it's it's uh, like, she, um, like, like, like hog wire, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, stainless. Yeah, yeah. And then my other question, I guess, was, sounds like you're going to be doing exposed rafters. Is that true? Mm -hmm. And so is the sheathing on top of that boards or plywood? Like when you're looking up on the underside uh, of the roof, will you be? Um, yep. I, I was going to use uh, per, per, per perlins, uh, hemlock one by. Uh-huh. Yeah. And just with perlins, some, not, with not some sort of. So you can see the underside of the metal roofing? Say, say it again. You'll see the underside of the standing seam roofing. So you would you would see the underside of the metal roofing, yes. Yep. For, from from the seated positions, at least. Yeah. And walking down the sidewalk. Um. Yeah, you you would from that person's stand. Yep. Yep. Is this attached to the building, or how is it attached? Um. It the it. it it, it, it is attached to the building, yes, uh, at, the, at the, the, the peak of the roof, I guess. Uh, it's not really a peak, but the highest point. So th this is really a permanent structure. It's not movable like the park was. C correct. It's very much permanent. Yeah, this will be here year round. Uh, how, how is it going to be attached to the building? It, it, it will likely, the, the deck will likely not be attached though they're um, um most likely there'll be a set of piers uh um uh co co closer to the house as well co co uh, co um, closer to the building um uh and I, i'm sorry but i just back to ben's question about seeing the underside of the metal um it, we, we could use uh, a, a plywood below the metal as well to cover that um, instead of the purlins. I like I like the purlins. I'd prefer boards, but that's you know I re, that's a but, lot of boards. But, but boards as in For, as you're sheathing, you know, like a, a rough sawn board that you're then attaching your solidly done and then putting your. You're standing gotcha. okay. on top just of that. just no spaces between. Yeah, but that's a lot of boards. I get that. I, mm -hmm. I know the reason why you would do purlins. Yeah. Um, this is Martha. Is there any lighting proposed? Uh, there, uh, there isn't, but there there uh, probably should be in there. Yeah. Yeah, we will. We will definitely be adding lighting. Is that something we need to submit with this? Would you would you prefer uh, like recessed cans or some fixtures, you know, hanging down, or what? What are your thoughts on possible fixtures? 
we were thinking patio type lighting, uh, LEDs, and uh, think something that would be dimmable. So, what type of patio lighting? Yeah, do you mean down low or up high from the roof? Up high from the roof. You can make them come back with a separate application, but they, if they're not quite ready to propose, I mean, the, the, the lighting does need a zoning permit. And because it's yeah. technically exterior, it needs design review. Um, so yeah, it either needs to be part of this permit or needs to be um, a separate permit. How far are you along in figuring out what light fixtures you want? Because I don't want to hold up building this space. Yeah. For the light fixtures, right? The reason we didn't uh, submit it or we don't, you know, it's not finalized is because we were going to use this deck for lunch only okay. uh, in the beginning. Um, but we're happy to, we could submit something separately for that. We're working on it. Yeah. Well, because you probably want to get going on building this as soon as possible. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe the three of us can meet separately to go over what the the parameters are for the outdoor lighting requirements to see what you okay. can fit in there because we have a bunch of lumen specifications and I've got to look at what else is on the building. So maybe we do that as a got separate it. permit if that's okay. You can you could also, be, be could also so do yeah. something that's Good. temporary, which would be uh, some either cable or string lighting using LED, which is, are not overly bright and can be and can be put on dimmers as well. Yeah, you could start that's with exactly that. That's exactly what we were thinking. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly what we we're thinking of doing. Uh, we weren't aware that that needed to be like a design review type thing. But we're happy to happy to show you separately too. But that that was our mindset. We could actually make an an option. Yeah, if it's a for you could do a black string or cable lighting with LED fixtures, dimmable LED mm -hmm. fixtures. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Okay, I'll just, just, we'll still need to, before I can issue the permit, I'll still need to review all the other lighting fixtures that are on the parcel. So it's not actually your building, it's the parcel that this is on, so that the other building's on, um, right. to make sure that, because there's like a maximum amount of light can, that can be emitted from a parcel. Um, so we'll, we'll maybe talk tomorrow. Right. Absolutely. Okay. It, 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 as I understand, you're not penetrating the building at all. You're not putting windows or doors in. No. C correct. So there's no direct access from the restaurant onto this um, patio? That's right. No. Right. You come out and you walk along the sidewalk, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. it's fairly close to the front door. Yeah, okay. The other nice thing about string lighting is that you can mount it where you think you need it, and then it's easy to move if you prefer the lighting to be directed in, in a little different direction. Exactly. That's what we thought that we would we would kind of pick out the type of lighting or the design of the lighting, but then we would, once the deck was built, we would see where it would be located. Okay, so the uh, the two options, if a standing seam roof is to be a red color, the color should be a brick red matte color and a darker shade to match the building trim and awning colors. Another option, and again, it's your option, is to use a matte black or dark bronze color compatible with the building and surrounding buildings in the area. And then I just made a note, standing seam colors last a long time. So <laughs> make sure it's exactly what you want. <laughs> and then the lighting option is for black cable or string lighting 
mounted to the roof rafters with dimmable LED lighting for interior patio lighting. What about throwing some no. gray as an acceptable color for the roof as well? Yeah, I like that idea. So a matte black or dark gray or dark bronze. color compatible with the building and surrounding buildings in the area. And again, the darker color, the darker you go, the better off you are. The other advantage of a dark color is that if you do use it seasonally, dark colors will get rid of any snow load, whether you're using the patio at that time or not, it's still a maintenance issue. And a dark color will mount snow loads quicker than anything else. That's a great point. I have a feeling we're going to probably reconsider black. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments, questions, or suggestions? Just comment. It's clear that you're intending to do a nice job here by your choice of contractor and your choice of materials. And so uh, I look forward to and appreciate uh, the detailing and making a nice thing. Thank you. I hear it. We agree. We can go through the criteria quickly. Exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Removal of historic materials and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. That's fine here. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Uh, there are no deteriorated defining features here uh, and no treatments that cause damage to historic materials. So that's acceptable. For historic structures, any new development shall be differentiated from the old but shall respect and be compatible with the massing, size, scale, architectural features, detailing, in overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equi equipment, trash storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from public view, acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire code shall be designed to maintain the character of the exist of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable. Height. Height of building addition shall not overwhelm the primary facade and must consider varied heights of existing buildings and adjacent buildings, acceptable. Proportion. Compatibility of relationship between width and height or facades as well as relationship of width to height of any windows and doors. They are just openings on this addition. Roof shape and equipment. Consider similarity or compatibility with roof shapes in the immediate area. Roof forms and pitch shall not be altered on the primary facade, acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights and tabulature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration. Again, that was one of the reasons we would suggested the uh, the trim on the addition to match in terms of the fascia. Architectural features on an addition shall not duplicate, but respect the original historic buildings architectural features acceptable. Landscaping screening and site furnishings. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards. For historic structures, ex existing historic and contributing resources such as street trees, fences, gates, walls, steps, gazebos, walkways, front and side yard patterns shall be retained or restored when impacted by the alteration of the building. You know, it's a little weird. It's, it's, I know. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, you've got seating that you're proposing, yes. but it's not. <laughs> yes. Peripheral. Walls and fences shall be compatible with the site and the building and scale, traditional materials and design that reflects the period of the building 
and or is compatible with the surrounding content, acceptable. Porches and stairs on historic structures. Location of porches, ramps, and stairs should be placed in a manner that does not impact or undermine the original and significant ornamentation or detailing of the existing building. Stairs, ramps, and porches shall employ suitable detailing to connect and be compatible with the historic and important design features of the existing building and new construction. Stairs and ramps shall be designed in a manner with details and materials that provide the most sensitive and compatible structure that fits the building design and layout acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Martha. Yes. And, yes. and Steve. I know, we're almost there, guys. Thank you. <laughs> so vote is five to nothing in favor. Um, so as with some of the others, there's recommendations and language on this um, form. And so I will send a scan version uh, to Aaron. I don't think I have Vince and Vaughn. Uh, actually, I think I have Vince's email somewhere in my email, but I'll send it around. Okay. Um, okay, Aaron, I'll need to, to sign it because he's listed as the applicant for this application. Um, and I will need some additional details on the lighting. We'll work that out, but we can talk tomorrow. Um, Absolutely. To, to figure out the lighting so that we can get the administrative site plan out the door as soon as possible. Okay? Great. Great. Absolutely. That sounds great. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with your project. Thanks. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. And we can move on to the next application, 51 Berlin Street. Uh, Honor John and Maria Quadros, Accelerate Permits applicant. Yep, so we have Lori on from Accelerate. Yes, I am here. So we are actually back in front of you once again. Um, back in December, I believe it was, you approved a canopy with um, a new menu board. And when the installer went out to um, work on the installation, they found that there's this exterior ladder that goes on the um, that goes up to a loft area, and because of that ladder, the installation of a canopy wasn't possible. So now we're back in front of you, asking um, instead of having this menu board on a canopy, if we can have the menu board mounted actually to the building. Just a quick note, if the design review committee feels like this is not enough of a difference that it should have come back, let me know. It just felt to me that previously it was separate from the building on its own you know, canopy and pedestal, and now it's attached to the building itself. So to me, it felt like it was too different from the prior application to just be an administrative approval. but. If, if you think otherwise, then let me know so that I will have that information for future applications. Not that there's all that many menu boards in Montpelier, but. Is the proposed board in the same location underneath the ladder? It's just closer to the building? Yes. Yes, that's correct. It'll be in pretty much identical spot where it is now, yes. It looks to me like, I mean, like it's basically a big TV, is that correct? Yes, it is. <laughs> um, Give or take. The only, yeah. it's a little, little different, but basically it's the same type of design it just doesn't have a base underneath it's just attached to the building yes that's correct and i realize this is different but whether internally lit signs is a thing 
Well, yeah, that's because this doesn't actually qualify as a sign because it's not made for you off the property. Yeah. It, it falls into a different category that's specific to a special use of drive throughs So this aspect, it's not quite the same thing as the it's internally like, lit signs yeah. that just glow forever. It's just, there's just enough lighting so you can read the menu, yeah. basically. Yeah. As far as I, I don't know if anybody else feels the same way, but basically it's the same thing. It's just attached to the building instead of on a stand. The appearance is essentially the same. If you want to just just say it's okay as is. Is the existing one? Does that one light up too? I, I, I'm not, fine with it. I don't know why they do it administratively, but it's not lit in the same way. Um, but yes, there there is lighting so that you can see it, um, you know, after dark. Mm -hmm. um, but the new board, um, yes, the new board is internal illumination. Was the other board internally lit or externally lit? The existing or the one that was approved? Yes. The one that was the one that was approved was this. It's virtually identical. Um, the one that was approved in December. Um, yep. The only difference now is this will be mounted against the building. Okay. I think you can have any problems with that. that. Unless anybody thinks differently, I think it can be administratively approved. It's the same thing, I, just attached to the building. I I agree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Good. Then you don't need so, this. All right, so we're not. You're not doing a new recommendation form. I will just amend the prior permit. So there will not. Be, we won't need to have a new permit issued. Um. It, yeah. You. It's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna send an official letter that's amending the prior permit. Um. That's still open. Okay. Because the design review committee basically saying they didn't really want to see this again. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so that'll be easy. Okay, <laughs> great. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you for coming to the meeting. We appreciate your time. And good luck. Hope this works with your stairs. Thank it's, you very much. As long as you can still order coffee and donuts, that, that's good. <laughs> You'll be able to get your coffee and donuts and sandwiches, everything. Okay, <laughs> thank, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. And we can move to the next application for one Prospect Street, Vermont State Housing Authority. Do we have someone representing the application? Hi, Sue Kugel at Vermont State Housing Authority. How are you? Good. And what, what's your name? Susan Kugel. You have that? Yep, I got okay. it. And describe the change in the sign. So currently the front of our building has um, letters that say one Prospect Street. What yes. we're looking to do is to dedicate the building to um, our executive director who retired last June. Um, Richard was an employee of the agency for over 50 years. Wow. Um, he started, the House Authority itself started in 1968. I believe Richard started his employment as a uh, accountant here at the House of Authority, somewhere around 1972. Um, in the 80s, he became executive director and um, held that position until he retired last year. So uh, here, folks here at the House of Authority would like to um, show our appreciation for all he has done for the citizens of Vermont, um, especially our low income um, and at risk folks by dedicating our building to him. So the building now, where it says One Prospect Street, um, once we get it painted, and it would be painted the same colors it currently is, um, would be to have the building say the Williams Building, One Prospect Street, Vermont State House Authority. The letters are black, um, and they will be mounted to the building in the same way that the current letters are mounted to the building. Will the letters have some dimensionality to them, like the current one prospect, or will they be flat? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I was told they're going to look similar to the, bill, the letters we have now. 
That sounds nice. They're going to be black letters? Yes, they are black. They will be black. And the current letters up there are black. Um, in your application, it, where it says one Prospect Street, much smaller than it does in the existing thing, are those also going to be black? Um, so everything, the letters that are up there now are coming down. Mm -hmm. And all the letters going up will be consistent in size. Okay. Um, and all of those letters will be black. Okay. Okay, yeah, because the I just shared on the screen the like the mock-up has different sized mm -hmm. lettering. Are you saying it would all be the same size lettering? Yeah, like each line would be the same size. Okay, so these are the right the different sections, but though they will be different sizes here. It's this is accurate. Um, to the best of my knowledge, that is accurate, and they will all be black. They will all be the same color. Okay. Yeah, the reason for my question was here, this, the one Prospect Street looks gray rather than black. I'm told that they're all going to be black. Okay, fine. And it seems like the Vermont State Housing Authority and one Prospect are the same font, just different line weights. Mm -hmm. Is that, maybe it's, um, the, maybe it's that, the gray. I think that is correct. I think, um, and they probably look a little bit bigger because the ones look a little gray um, and they're certainly different in size. Sorry, the cleaning crew is here cleaning. So you might hear them <laughs> coming through soon. So there's where you can see what the actual colors of the building are. The, the proposed is um, a black and white, but that's what the, the green colors of the building, so it'll have the black lettering. I just put down that the new lettering, since I didn't see it in the rest of the application, that the new lettering will be a black color with dimension depth similar to the existing lettering, and again, in relation to the size of the lettering. Any other comments, questions, or suggestions? Then again, I can go through the criteria. Uh, this is criteria for signs in the design control district. The size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior designs within the design review district shall be compatible with the building and structures of the site and surrounding properties, acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures acceptable. If a building has multiple tenants, there be, shall, shall be consistency in placement and size among all signs. I think housing authority is the only one here, so that's, that's correct. not applicable. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries, acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials for the building, acceptable. Sign, design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be of the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings, acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves, acceptable. All in favor of the application for the sign lettering, speak your names. Yes, Eric. Uh, this is Martha. I'm a yes. Yes, Liz. And Steve is yes. So five to nothing in favor of the new proposed lettering. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good evening. You too, Susan. I'll send you an email with the form. Okay, terrific. Thank you very much for coming. Have a good night. Good night. And has anyone had a chance to look at the meeting minutes from March the 21st? Yes, I'll move approval. And this is Martha, I'll second it. All in favor of the minutes, speak your names. Well, I would like to make one adjustment. Oh, okay. I'm on the 66 Main Street. If there's a passage here saying that I clarified that the seating structures do have floors approximately one inch 
above grade, they will be more like seven inches. They were never to be one inch. Okay. I must have misheard my notes. Thank you. That's okay. Be a very thin structure to be one inch. <laughs> and with that change, do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. I'm, and I'll second it. All in favor, speak your names. Ben. Eric, Eric, Steve, Martha, and Liz was not there. Okay. Does anybody have anything else to add at this point, or do I hear a motion to adjourn? So I will move, move that, says Eric. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor, speak your names. Ben. Eric. Steve. Meeting is adjourned. Uh, and we do have a meeting at, it's not, it didn't make it on here, but we do have a meeting on the 16th. We already have three applications for it. So there okay. may be quite a few by the time we get there. All right. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank okay, you for thank the you. Okay. Good night.